try to try to get everybody's voices. Uh, I mean, if, if I want to make sure that we get, if we talk about nuts and bolts, it doesn't go on too long. Right. Yeah. That we have time to get to the learning phase yeah. of it, even though you're in the middle of it. Yeah. That we have time for you to reflect on, you know, what the experience has meant for you, what you might be taking away from it, what, what the value might be um, from your perspective, um, and, you know, and for you guys to sort of opine. opine and we talk to each other, not to, to the to camera. So we talk to each other, we look at You're, each other, yeah, or what? So. Yeah, we can do a little of each, but yeah, you can glance back there, but I, I think that's right. I think uh, we talk to each other. Yeah. And it, because that helps Philip also, because otherwise Philip's, if we're all talking this way, yeah. Philip's going to really feel left out. Um, and maybe just when we introduce, we would introduce to yes. the camera, but otherwise yes. we're talking to each other. Okay. So I'll look for, um, just time-wise, so if we're going to start at one, we're going to end it, we're going to try to end... Um, Clock's a little slow, so we're going to start pretty soon. Um, oh. the, I'm sorry, Ju Julie. So at uh, two, Julie. No, at one, yeah. I'm going to wave, you know, and then at two, I'm also going to wave at 2.15, just for... Oh, she's going to And we want to stop at 2.15. She's going to wave at 2 o'clock. Okay, so, so <laughs> but that means... I, we can yeah. all see yeah. the 2 o'clock. Yeah, but... Yeah. So just for some reference, it's, Waving is nice. it seems to me by <laughs> around 20 of... At the very latest, maybe sooner, I want to make sure we've gotten getting to Yuri and talking about cherry orchard. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, maybe even sooner. Vishnovsky is sad, right? No. Okay, no. we're good. One o'clock. And if, if there's time, I'll do a little bit about the linkages Wrong. projects. What? Howard, we're, we're live. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for joining us today. My name is Amy Pinto. I am the co-founding artistic director of The Imaginists, and we are here in Santa Rosa, California, um, to talk about international collaboration in a world turned upside down. And I want to start with introducing Philip Arnault, the founder and director of the Center for International Theater Development, who many of you know, and um, I'm going to let uh, Philip the rest of our um, panel here and get us started with this conversation. So thank you, Philip, for making all of this happen. Well, not alone. Um, <clears throat> uh, I want to thank the Trust for Mutual Understanding. Um, I wish there was an empty chair here for Barbara Lanciers who couldn't be with us uh, on this trip. Uh, we send you our love, Barbara. And I um, also want to thank uh, longtime partners at HowlAround. Uh, they have been uh, so important in helping tell the stories of what's going on and uh, helping us tell the stories. So I thank that whole team and I thank you guys for hosting us today. Um, we're the CITD is in its 32nd year, and in looking at what international exchange has, has been, what people have understood it to be, is the movement of ARPOD's company, Criticor, wonderful productions, but finding those, you know, in New Jersey or New York or uh, Dima Krimov bringing his production to dance space uh, or to St. Anne's, uh, but with the, uh, uh, the productions. And that's really been the defining face for most Americans both in the profession and outside. And I think we're at a, I know we are at a, a real critical uh, moment of danger and of change. And I see international cultural exchange as like, a, like an iceberg. And it, what's really visible is what I've just described. Right at the waterline, which has some real visibility and that we're gonna 
talk about today is where not companies, but individual artists, directors, a designer, a composer, uh, comes to work with American actors, with an, uh, American companies to make work. And we have two stunning examples sitting around me right now. The piece that uh, we all came out here to see, Arpad's collaboration with the Imaginists. Um, and I've known Arpad's work since the beginning of Kretikor. Saw his first piece and was championing that with anybody I could bring to see your work. And I met you guys, I think, 10 years ago. Um, and I see the, this incredible work being done that really is leaving much more than box office receipts, that is leaving an imprint on the American theater that's much deeper and that I think 20 years from now will have much more impact uh, than the top. But below that even has been HowlRound's job, has been my friend Thomas Schatze, who's, uh, when I first met you, Thomas, you were translating, I think. Yeah, I think so. For me as a yeah. graduate student or something. Something like and that. And he's now one of the top critics uh, in Hungary and in Europe. And he has a great story to tell about making all of this happen. But Thomas writing about us here, writing about what uh, he's seeing in Europe, howl around, focusing on beyond our shores. Uh, CITD, uh, we publish three publications. Yuri will be uh, finishing up his uh, Russian notebook with a long um, piece on uh, Krimov's collaboration with his Wilma Theater. Um, we have a regular uh, Hungarian letter of news. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, you can find out how to get on that subscriber list. It's free. Uh, so there have been a lot of people trying to tell the stories of what's happening now. Um, and then underneath that, the sediment is what I've given really all my life at CITD and before with mentors like uh, Martha Coignet and ITI, her work at ITI, uh, Ellen Stewart, who always started with making the investment first in the individuals and then connecting individuals. And in both of these instances that we're going to talk about today, uh, these all really grew out of physical, early curiosity and meetings. And you can just follow that thread up to two really brilliant performances that I'm proud to sit in the same room with. Uh, I see these as very dark times. Uh, I see as the 32 years of my work with CITD uh, being turned upside down with the war. Uh, we are, we've just commissioned 23 plays by Ukrainian playwrights. They're writing with the right hand or their dominant hand and carrying their Kalishnikovs in the other hand. Working with our longtime Russian partner, John Friedman, who's now on the Isle of Crete, uh, we have a huge database now of over 100 
uh, Ukrainian plays. Uh, it's called the Worldwide Ukrainian Play Reading Series. That's on our website. We invite you to take a look at that. We have over a hundred uh, readings that are all uh, proceeds as uh, fundraisers as readings in um, I think 16 countries right now. Uh, a great many American country uh, uh, manifestations of that. So we're we're in the fight till the end, um, and I think it is looking at. I'm looking at a decade of this world being turned upside down. Uh, I'm here with two really long-term uh, Kopani's partners in crime. Uh, Howard Shalowitz, the co-founder of Woolly Mammoth, who stepped down three or four years ago and has been traveling with me first with Woolly Mammoth, and Yuri Ornoff, who now is the artistic director of uh, the, the leadership team at uh, the Wilma Theater and was responsible for producing Dean McCrimoff's Cherry Orchard. Uh, they are the now associate directors of CITD. I just turned 81 and uh, refused to stop. I'll stop when I fall over or they bring out the Monty Python drool cup and the hook can take me out of all of this. But I'm here and they're here and uh, Howard is leading our Polish uh, project, our Polish linkages project. Well, I'm still running uh, with younger 25 year olds, uh, a Hungarian project. But I'm gonna give it over to Howard and Yuri to, he's so much better at this than I am, uh, to take this on and I. Well, thanks, Philip. Um, and um, it really, it, 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 Amy it's, and Brent, it's just so great to be in this space, which I've never been to before. And just to know, and the, the show that we saw just a couple nights ago that Arp had worked on with you was astonishing. Um, for those who, I don't think you said the title, Philip, but, but the play is, uh, is um, Someone Dies Again, S-D-A, Someone Dies Again. I think I got that right. Yeah. Um, why don't we do, so uh, Yuri, you got a quick introduction from Philip. Why don't we let our, our introduction stand? And um, why don't the other four of you introduce yourselves? You're all involved in one way or another with this uh, brilliant project um, that's ongoing. And so why don't you just introduce your roles in it and then we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time on the sort of nuts and bolts of how it came about, how it was structured, do some reflections on, you know, what, what are some of the learnings and takeaways, even as you're in the middle of it. Um, we'll stop at a certain point and come back to Yuri to talk a little bit more about the Cherry Orchard Project with, with brilliant, the brilliant Russian director, Dmitry Krimov, which just finished its very uh, brilliant run at the Wilma Theater. And then if there's a little time at the end, we'll say a word or two about the Poland Initiative that I'm working on and the Hungarian initiative that Philip's working on, but we'll see if we have time uh, for all of that. So take it away, you guys introduce yourselves and take it away on, on this uh, production you're in the midst of. So I'm, again, I'm Amy Pinto and I'm a co-founding artistic director of The Imaginists, also an actor and a director. Yeah. But you're an actor in this play. And an actor yeah. in this play. Yeah. A very key actor in this play. Yeah, and I am uh, the same, I share uh, art artistic director with AIM and um, I'm also an actor, uh, Brent Lindsay. In this play. Yes, in this play, that's Major. true. Ab yes. Okay, I am not in this play. <laughs> <laughs> Finally someone. Your spirit hovers all around. Yeah, there. but my spirit is there. Okay, I am Tomasz Jasai. I'm a Hungarian theater critic and um, university lecturer and curator. Um, and I will tell you a very special story, I suppose. Uh, uh, how the Imaginists and Arpad uh, uh, met years ago. My name is Arpad Schilling. I'm a Hungarian theater director and I directed this P 
piece SDA, Someone Dies Again, with Brent, Amy, and 10 other actors. So maybe we should start, um, Tamash, with a little bit of history. Um, I'll, I'll just share uh, briefly before we met Tamash. I know that Center for International Theater Development took Amy to uh, Hungary to the Independent uh, Theater Festival in 2013. And previous to that, Philip, you sent us a package of DVDs. And we put in, the first one we put in was Credit Corps, The Seagull. Wow. And uh, we sat in our living room and our jaws were on the floor and we thought, <laughs> okay, so what in the hell, who is this? And how do we, you know, how do we, how do, we do this? Um, and, and, you know, that, that really was sort of like the beginning of a dream. Um, and I don't know that we understood that it, there was anything real in that dream, that there was a way to get um, in I, uh, any closer than a DVD. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, lo and behold, we had a, a, a follow-up visit um, here in our space by Tamash, who, who I think Center for International Theater Development sent Tamash around the country, and we made a special trip up here. So, um, Tamash, if you want to share a little bit of your experience, that would be yeah, um, and you know, it's, um, it's a sort of a very special experience for me as a Seattle critic and editor because usually what I do is um, to sit in chairs like this <laughs> and uh, watching a show, um, then I go home and write something, it gets published, I get a very small amount of money for it, and that's all. <laughs> usually that's what happens to all of us who are criticizing other people's work. Um, but this was something special, and uh, here I, I, I also have to mention again the name of Mr. Philip Arno because um, I think it was uh, 2013, I was in um, Bucharest at a festival, and um, Philip sent me an email. At that time, we've been working together for a few years. Uh, uh, he sent me an email that he wants me on Skype. At that time, we did not know Zoom, uh, which has changed in the last two years. He wants me to meet on Zoom with him and with Barbara Lanciers. And um, out of the blue, he said that why don't you go to the States? Why don't you come to the States for a month for three different cities um, just to know theater people here in the States? Who are the key figures? Who are the most interesting companies? And so on and so on. And I said, okay, yeah, why not? <laughs> and then it happened in 2014 at that point. Um, I, um, I defended my PhD thesis um, at the University of Szeged, where I, I teach and I live. Actually, this PhD thesis was written about the work of Arpad Schilling and the Kretaker Sinhas, so you know, all threads are coming in one direction. And then in 2014, I had this amazing trip in New York, in San Francisco, in Austin, where I met dozens of people, with the help of Philip, of course, and here in San Francisco, um, I met with uh, Amy and Brand, and um, they were there, or Amy was, was there in Budapest a year ago at the Hungarian Showcase, where Arpad presented um, um, his, his new works, or his new projects, and here in Santa Rosa, in this amazing space, um, I, I saw some of your shows here, but we were talking a lot. Um, you, you, you told me a lot about your work with the local community. Who are your actors? What are you interested in? And at some point I came up with the idea, okay, that's very nice guys, but uh, why don't you talk with, with Arpad? Because he's really uh, into something like this in recent years. And I think that was the point when the whole thing started. A year later, Brent returned to, the, to Budapest, and everything else is history, I think. But that was, that was the start. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I am, I am very grateful and, and uh, actually very surprised and very, um, I don't know, satisfied that it finally happened because it took like eight years, okay, two years of pandemic, right? <laughs> but uh, but still, it took years, but it happened, and I think that's the point. So that's to put it very short. I, I, you know, and I think what um, before we get to our part, I think one of the most amazing things about 
these visits to uh, my, my I made my first meeting with you Arpad and then and then you and Lila coming here and meeting with us in Santa Rosa and um, was this very special relationship that uh, you know as human beings um, that it, it, it was that was an indication to me like uh, this this could happen it wasn't just it wasn't just a artists coming together it was human beings that um, I got along and laughed and we had a good time and um, that, that that's when it became real for me you know it was like oh yeah this could this this dream that happened once mm -hmm. upon a time actually could could be um, and I you know I, I'm interested because I've never I've never really heard about your your point of view from those visits but um, for you know, for me, it was a miracle. I mean, it was like this is you know, from this DVD to these visits to your office, and, and then your visit here, um, and then where we sit now, it's it's complete. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's a miracle for us, and to be an actor in your show, I mean that, uh, it you know, it's a dream come true. Really, it's a a moment in time that has become a, a very full world. Hmm. Um, Which I think kind of reinforces this point about building from relationships absolutely. And, and, and one step at a time. Yeah. Amy, can you just give us a quick sketch of the nuts and bolts? I mean, how long was our pad here for the, you know, what was the actual process of working on the show? And then let's go to our pad and, and, and get, get some of his reflections. Uh, the original plan was over a year. Our pad would come three, three times in different T at different times in order to understand where we were and to understand who we are and the people and because of the pandemic we had to so now we made a new plan and our pod arrived at the, now we had done a lot of work of two years of Skype we actually still did Skype yeah. <laughs> yeah. we didn't do zoom yep. um, and uh, two years of just lots of discussions because so much changed in terms of our families our our children our health uh, of the the world the pandemic theater um, so two years of meeting in kitchens and as Arpad was around all around Europe uh, making different productions and then uh, here in uh, Santa Rosa in February the beginning of February um, through uh, May 20th just uh, this past Friday was our premiere and so, I understand the first couple weeks was a sort of essentially an audition workshop or something like that. Yes, and this is a very interesting and wonderful thing because one thing that we do with our company is there are no auditions. We don't audition. Uh, we invite. Uh, and then we go through a process together. And so the workshop is, yes, an audition, but it's also a meeting and it's also an exchange and it is a workshop. Mm -hmm. And Arpad will speak to that, I, I believe, because... Um, it's a wonderful thing. So yes, uh, two weeks of meeting with about uh, 15 to 20 people uh, before we then took a week to or a day to figure out uh, maybe the story, the characters. Arpad said, can we use all 12 of these people? And we said, we have to, okay, we look at the budget. <laughs> and But of course, we will, of course we want to have all 12. We want, we want it to be the vision, um, so so it ended up being twelve of us um, together uh, in the workshop. In the and, and and you know I, I would add that in that workshop audition, as we call it, a lot of the original ideas that are a part of this show, or at least a few, um, I think you know that's what sparked some of the imagination that continued into the show. I mean, a lot of these scenes came out of these improvisations. And, um, you know, they've changed, of course, they've evolved, but uh, that, that was a, it was not separate. I mean, it's, 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 it's right. all part of the fabric. It's part of the yeah. process. Arpad, maybe you can talk about where the idea for the show came from to do a piece about gun violence. Where, how, where did that come up in the process? <clears throat> um, was that before you got here? And then how, how, did, how did it go? Uh, yeah, if you... If you come from Europe, uh, or especially from Eastern Europe, so this this question, the gun, is a very very shocking. So this is what just I can say. But of course, we have to accept this is another another uh, culture, other history. 
but for me, I think the, the, the beginning, you know, when we were together with Lila, with my wife and, and, and you together in, in your house, and this was the first time that I asked you, do you have a gun here in your house? You know, because for me it was, it was, it was, it, this, this question is very disturbing, you know, so honestly I don't want to be in a house where there is a gun. And where, because not, not just about this thing, but about the mentality, you know, it's like, uh, so, so who are you? And you know, I think in the United States, this is an added question, like if, if you have a gun in your house because of your attitude or behavior or your fear or something, so this is a very important, uh, very important information about you. So how you see the world, how you right. live it in your community, so what, how you behave, what you feel. Uh, what is your connection to the other people? So for me, it was an interesting question, of course, and it was a endless talk about this question. So and, and about the family the members, about the you know about the relatives who have it. What is right. the difference? What kind of conflicts? And you know, so and of course, after brothers and sisters and family members, like the roots of all of the stories. And it, it's the opening scene of the play, in a yeah. way, where Brent's character asks his brother, yeah. who he's putting up sort of as a lodger in his own home, he discovers his brother has a gun and he's sort of shocked um, and it takes it away from him. So it's so interesting that the opening of the play really came from a kind of encounter that, that, that you all had. Yeah, so it was, and, and I think it's a good example how this process uh, so we're de developing because it was uh, the talk. So this, we, we had to talk to each other and it was the same with the other participants all the time, questions. What do you think? What kind of world you experience around you? And because it was only one, I could, I could read a lot of things about the United States, but the most important thing to talk to the people who you work with. So it's like how they see. So for me, if we talk about this cultural exchange, and, and there is another thing, it's, uh, yeah, thanks for Philip, and Tomash to be here and this whole thing. But you know what we talk about is how this dream can be uh, more realistic, how it can be not like a big, big project. You know, how we talk about it, like how European people and people from United States can meet with each other, how it can be easier, how it can be mm -hmm. more it's flexible and not just talk about it. it's like oh it was a dream it was years and years you know so for me it's like uh, like like a middle age story you know? <laughs> it was a big plan in the in the past you know and after the ship goes through the ocean and you know so how it can be more natural because this is this is very important how we can how we can uh, yeah this this cultural exchange and if there is a chance to meet with each other, of course, the talk, the honest talk. So it's like, what you think, what I think, how we see this. And, and I have to say, I, I am very lucky because these people here in this company, especially Amy and Brent and the others, they were so generous. So they were so generous to share their opinions because they have very strict opinion about the things. But for me, the next question was, can you be critical with with yourself, with, with, mm. with your thoughts, with your point of view. So can you imagine, if you have a strict opinion, if you have a strict political agenda, but next to this, can you be critical with it? Can, because this is what, it, what uh, I'm very familiar with this. This was the, the way what we did in Greater Kirk Company in the past. All the time the question was for me and for the, for, for the whole team, it's like, okay, if you do something after, we have to criticize it, we have to step further, we have to, mm. so we can be pleased, you know, it's like, okay, everything is so good, so nice. <laughs> because in that case, we lose the, the root of this, so the theater is something where it's a, it's a, it's a thermometer, you know, somehow. And for, for me, it was, so this was the best thing, this kind of talks, I remember it was a beautiful, four months here because you know I live here that people can see but 
there is a house where I live with my daughter, and you know, it was, I don't know, 30, 40 feet. Just every day come here, talk, be with the people, and go back. And so everything is, we were so focused, and every moment when, so when we started the work, all the time there was a question. Okay, this is a question for today. What is this? What is this word? What is this sentence? What is this, uh, you know, what, what we read in the newspaper or something? So, because this was the way to understand the people and this was the way to dig out the, 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 the topic and the form and the language. Because if you talk about a cultural exchange, for me it was a question, okay, maybe I have a, maybe I have a vision, maybe I have a language, how I try to make a theater. But how this American actor will react to this? Because what if, you know, maybe, what if they are too much, or they are overacting, or it's if their, their uh, thinking is completely different, so it's like different, uh, if I say poetic, what they think when they hear this word. So what is this, how we can meet? And you know, it was very interesting, it was from the very f first moment it was so, clear because because they are so and I especially talking about Amy and Brent so human you know it's like okay the, the question is how it can be real or, or, or truth how we can find the truth in the theater so it was very and and the other thing what I told you Brent after the premiere is very familiar with me because in the creator company uh, we never talk about just shows, you know, it's like, okay, how we can make a newer show, newer show, newer show. All the time the question was, what is the mission? What is, hmm. what is the project? What is the question? What is the topic? Because all of the people in the house have to focus on this, this main question, the main topic. And it's not just like part of the repart repertoire, you know, it's like how we can... And this is a luxury situation because we had enough money to make this, this project and this is maybe this is a point when we have to thank for the for the supporters, the Hewlett Packard and, and and all of the supporters and the private supporters, everybody who gave a chance for us to work uh, together and during this work, it was no question. We have to do something, as you mentioned, it's like a good theater. So we try to find this 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 way. So for me, the biggest experience is like we understand each other. Yeah. And it's not just a question of the language, it's a question of something else, it's the theatre language. Mm. So we understand each other, we understand the word together. So I think this is what Philip's point, you know, is like how we can meet and we can talk and we can get something, we can share something and we can understand something. And I think it was, it was perfect in this book. Yeah, the investment, the extra investment compared to a show that one of the two of you would direct, right, Nady, is in the time to spend with a, a great artist and in investing in the time to have this kind of dialogue, to have this kind of somewhat more extended uh, process. You're an ideal company in a way to engage in this because it's not dissimilar to, to your to your own process, I would I would imagine. Yeah, Phil. But you know there's a <coughs> There's a coda to this discussion about the dreamers that made this happen. And I would not want to not remember Lisa, <clears throat> Lisa Steinler, who ran uh, Z-Space when we first, when they first started talking about this. Um, I came first to San Francisco 50 years ago. and. Project Arto, which turned into Z Space, was always a place I spent time with. And without Lisa's support early on, uh, I mean, I think that really strengthened. You had you had a real partner there. Mm -hmm. Lisa's gone now. I hope she's watching this. We love you. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Before we leave, I want to hear more about kind of the takeaways from this production, but before we leave it, just to help people who are listening and who obviously haven't had a ch chance to see the show, I'm gonna put you on the spot, Brent. Can you kind of give us a two minute picture of what the production is? I mean, from what I understand, there was hours of improvisation mm -hmm. 
with our pad, our pad and the company that then ended up getting scripted more or less uh, by our pod. So the thing that you're putting up on the stage now is a kind of finished script, which is not <coughs> which is not improvised at all anymore. It's yeah. So it became a kind of script that's set. Um, and um, it, I don't know. Could you give us a description of just the the scenario of this family and the the situation? Mm, yeah. I mean, I, um, so I mean, I think one of the things that attracted us to Arpad's work was tragic comedy. I mean, it's a dark dark humor. Things that um, are painful, and we find ourselves laughing at things that um, might be uncomfortable. Um, and this does involve, you know, it's, it's a it's a typical family leaning liberal, which I think is was a very important aspect to this. Is we wanted to be critical of ourselves and our own bubble. So um, it is a American family, West Coast, North County, you know, probably North Bay. That was the model. And um, a mysterious tragedy that happened six years ago in the family that they haven't quite uh, all, they, 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 they've all dealt with in different ways. But it's left a gaping hole that they're all trying to either, you know, step forward or deal with in, in, in their different, different ways. And they're part of a community. Of course, and this is a big part of this <coughs> show is what does community mean? The community, your your direct community, the commu the siloed communities, the the others, the you know, and when do those separations happen? And I think that that was a big part of our conversation, and I think it's a just an organic outgrowth of our ensemble and the people that we work with. It's just um, we deal with different communities that are one community. So I think that th these conversations really. Um, I think started the larger conversation that became the script. But I think what is even more important is the poetic uh, that, that Arpad's talking about and the many layers, the multi-layers that come into this um, process. And I think that, you know, for those people that come to the theater as an audience that have the curiosity and the depth to go deeper are going to hook into these multi-layers um, and, it, and, and, you know, if you're looking at it very, um, uh, on, the, on the surface, you might just leave with a very superficial uh, story. It, both are there for you. But I, but I do think that, you know, the, the audience feedback already has been so amazing for those people who really do want to go deep with this project. Because it works on, um, yes, a story level, but on a metaphorical level. Uh, symbols level. I mean, it, 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 it works on you, and I think it's a piece that you could probably go and, and, and wake up the next morning thinking about and going, what in the hell, you know, was that? Um, yeah, and the, you know, it's interesting, the, the process leads to the complexity that I think you were talking, the, the, the being critical, asking hard questions. The piece is complex to, you know, there's a moral ambiguity. Uh, maybe until the very ending. I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> but there's a, 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 a com as an audience member, you're in a complex position watching this. Are you uh, whose version of the truth mm -hmm. are you sort of um, are you sort of leaning towards? Mm. And um, th that's what I thought was astonishing about it. And the fact that on some level or another, you want to believe everybody's version of the truth. <laughs> um, and the play doesn't make it easy to go. Here's the good guy. Here's the bad guy. I think what you're accomplishing here is we do a lot of theater, which is just sort of preaching to the converted. I think we're all a little bit, you know, we a, a little bit afraid of that. We know we talk to liberal audiences, and we can easily congratulate them for the good liberal things we all feel. I, I don't mean to speak for anyone else, but I think this piece is trying to go much deeper than that and sort of a challenge even a, 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 any audience member, liberal or conservative, to uh, question their own. Uh, their own their own points of view. So that's what I think is astonishing about it. Mm -hmm. uh, are there takeaways for you, Amy? And then we'll we'll move on. But I mean, uh, like, what's the big takeaway? You're in the middle of this. It's a little too. Soon. But I mean, in terms of this kind of process compared to your normal work, how how might this change your company or the way you work in the future? Uh, I think the the. the the criticism, the, the real, and, and the, the way, and the autonomy of each individual in it, and the way that ARPOT has 
really give space for people um, to to be we were sort of like a, a dramaturgs at the same time mm -hmm. because because the different people who are who are playing a, a sort of version they're playing a character but it's it's also themselves they what they bring to it because it comes out of a structured improvisation an idea with of characters and a situation that Arpad would give to us and then we as just we would be using our own memories and using ourselves so it's um, and so this 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 real um, endless discussions of, like Arpad's saying and, and we and this idea that we wants to know there were endless discussions yeah. about a sentence about a gesture about a character about a backstory of a character about um, you know and so that's 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 that criticism and that's that discussion that we never and we don't stop even just every day there's a new what about that thing is do we need it would they do it why you know and and so it's um, it's exacting and um, and it's wow. kind of exhausting, but it's, um, I think it makes uh, something that isn't just easy. It's not easy. It's not, it's hard won. Like yeah, I should add though, again, for people watching, it's an edge of your seat experience. I mean, watching the show, you are like, I felt on the edge of my seat every second because it, it, even just the way the script landed, you're getting new information, new complications, you know, on a, on a pretty regular basis and kind of wondering, oh, I thought that and now I think something different. Um, Tomasz, I'm going to give oh. you the last word on this discussion just to come back to you. So thinking back to the work, you, all the work of Arpads that you've seen and worked on, how do you reflect on what this is in Arpads sort of oeuvre um, now seeing his work with American actors? Um, I think this play is, uh, okay, at one, one time it's very American. So I cannot yeah. imagine this play can be, um, you know, remade in Europe or something because we, we, we do not have these colors in, in every way. We do not have these problems. Of course, we do have these problems, <laughs> but you know, in some in some other uh, other other ways. Um, and the the other thing is that um, yes, I think it's it's closely connected to the works of Arpad in the last decade as well, what, what he was doing in different countries, as he's not working anymore in Hungary. Um, just a few examples. Um, I think what, uh, what is really interesting for Arpad in the last decade or, or maybe longer period, the family. The family as, as, as a, you know, a basic uh, unit of the whole society. What happens in the family is something uh, that happens in the whole society, but in a very small scale. And uh, what you said about the characters, how, how you um, um, identify with them, how you accept their truths, and so on and so on, it, 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 it all helps that you see a father, a mother, an uncle, someone there um, who, who, who you, can, you can go with. So I think that's, that's, uh, that's very important, the family thing. And the other, what Arpad already mentioned, and it's, um, it's connected with the history of Kretakur as well, that uh, there is always a problem. So there is always a question, a central thing. So they were never doing uh, things, you know, just for fun. This Larpudlar thing, it never interested him and his company members, but, but there was always a question. And I think this is something uh, he, he, he takes with himself in, in, in his different periods of his career. So, yeah. Is, is he accurate, Arpad? I, I, I hate to yeah. let someone talk about you without giving you a moment. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. I think uh, uh, I, I really, uh, I agree with this family thing, and it, for me it's very interesting because uh, I think this is the place where we got the first traumas. This is the place we got the first attack. And this is why the family is a so, so big question, a big problem for me. Because we maybe, because everybody comes some kind of family. Maybe it was a broken family. It was like, a, you know, maybe somebody had to go to an institution because of the family. So everybody has something relation to the family and I think if and and this is this is one thing what I think it's it's important question another thing is this what Tomas mentioned uh, 
what can happen. I think Western Europe, it can happen more, but Eastern Europe, it can happen less because we have less experiences about, for example, about people of color. So we have what is a very important question and how we can tolerate the different things, the different uh, sexuality, the different, uh, the different uh, colors, the different backgrounds. So it's, it's a big, big uh, question and I was very happy uh, to, you know, when I, ident when I identify myself, I never say I'm Hungarian because of this, because I think it's maybe the, it's a bigger scale what I can understand and what I can work on and what I can think of than, than what I can get in Hungary, get, get a chance in Hungary to, to think or work, because for me this kind of questions, when we started, it was a big question, like if this company is working with the, community here in Santa Rosa. So it's a big question how we can involve this different community. So we can make, it was a big question if most of the people white, how we can, how we can talk about the, the problem uh, uh, between white people and people of color. So we need, we need to involve people. We have to give them a chance to show their point of view and 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 this is this is very important for me because because this is what we can't realize in in, in for example in Hungarian theater mm. so you know for example the Hungarian the 10 percent of the Hungarian population is Roma but you never see them on the stage mm. yeah. and I think this is the, the representation on the stage it's a political question absolutely political and social question and for me, it was very good to be in this context when it was like, okay, it's a statement. We have to involve our people, and, and, and because it can, and, and it, we knew from the very beginning it's a very dangerous game because there is a white family in the center of this show, and how we can, how the people can accept it, and, and how how we can talk about the white people's problem today, what is very controversial. So, and for me it was very interesting how we, how we can do this, how we can, how we can, uh, how to say, to, 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 to be acceptable, yeah. you know, so to be the, with, with this problem. So I think it was very interesting process and for me as well, because the main character is a white heterosexual man, like me. And for me, this was very important, talking about this kind of white man, the problem of this white man, the problem with this white man, inside, outside, in the family, in his position, as a father, as a husband, as a worker, as a, as a, 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 a person who has a responsibility community. So I think, I think this, it's all of this is very important question for me. because I think I have less chance to talk about it in, for example, in East white people, and all the time we talk about the same problems for the same people from the, from the same point of view, and it's very hard to talk about the, the other uh, perspectives. Just the last thing, for example, lesbian, uh, lesbian couple on the stage. So for here, we can, it's so natural, and it's so good to talk about it, and we can, we can examine it from different points of view. But for example, in Hungary, if you put a lesbian couple on the stage, it's like, okay, do you need this kind of provocation? This is the first question. Right. Right? Do you want to provoke the people? And I say, it's like, I don't want to provoke the people, I just want to talk about it, it, something that is not So you have a huge message, you want to provoke the people. And here, it was so great, this moment, when, when I could say like, okay, I, 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 I want to show this on the stage, but not because I want to as possible, you know, it's like, but what is with this couple? What is in this couple? What, how, it's just a love, but what's happening inside? So for me, it was a new dimension when we, it was, everything was so natural, but we could criticize all of the aspects of this kind of 
relations. So I was very happy to, to get this wider context and, and wider possibility for a director, for me as, as an artist, to, to talk about uh, you, you know, you're giving, questions. You're giving me some real insight because Project. It's been a Zoom project that will become a travel project, but um, and and I intuitively understand the appeal of learning about Polish theater because it's got this great experimental tradition. But the that the Polish Polish artists have with the American social cultural moment with Black Lives Matter with the Me Too movement, you're helping me understand it in a way. It's it's sort of a, is a, 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 a I don't know a more complex landscape and. Than, you know, just the, the, the short thing is like when you feel it's very strange what I say, but when you feel you are at home, because you know what you thought about a word, it was so strange in your context, in your. Mm -hmm. own. You are a strange person. You want to provoke the people. You think very strangely. Yeah, yeah, we heard about this, but <laughs> you know this is not the reality. So. And for me, it's like, I want to live with this. Yeah. So for me, it's not something special, like me too, Black Lives Matter, of course. So I want to eat it. I want, because I know, I understand it. Yeah. So I want to next to it. So this is why for me, it's like, I, why it's a provocation if you, for example, you, you need a Roma actor on the stage what do you want to express? Nothing. They are just part of the community. <laughs> right. They have to be there. It's not the message. Yeah. So you know, it, maybe you understand it's what, totally. is, what is this politically and, and social. So for me, it's an interesting question. Well, it gives us a little pride as Americans to hear that there's still a kind of openness and freedom in our culture that, that maybe others, others don't always have. Philip. Howard, so <clears throat> the edge of his seat, uh, there are 80 seats in this performance at Sea Space. Uh, this room here is about 50 feet deep. The space you're playing in is double this at Sea Space. There are two rows on either side of this long uh, valley where the show is, <clears throat> show is performed. And I think that's important as we're talking about visualizing this, that I'm able to watch scenes with actors 30 feet away and are keeping that tension and that focus. It, yeah. And, and they're going to move it here for two weeks and play outside on the street. And, you know, you're rebuilding it for this 50 by... Well, you, you, Philip, you used the word tension, and just as a maybe concluding remark, I think one of the things that impressed me the most to all to Amy and Brent and Arpad was just how successfully the show sustains a kind of actorly inner tension, and I think that speaks to the complexity of the process. It's like everybody's in a in a complicated state in terms of their inner life. I think that may be a, a great feature of Arpad's work in general but it was palpable in a way that I don't always see or maybe don't often see in the American theater. So it was very and, exciting for me just as a director. And, and, and many, many stories happening at the same time on the stage because we all inhabit the same space and many, many stories, which I think Yuri, you spoke to, being this, this process, we, we had it, and I, I wanna hear you speak about it, uh, the, the run through was already happening two or three weeks ago before we opened. So by the time we open, we, we are living in it and moving. We, we know the text well. We, we don't have, it's not the same rush, 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 four weeks. You know, we, we get to keep developing the many, many, many stories that yeah. are happening at the same time on the stage and all of those layers. And I, I would love, and I know you were talking well, about Well, yeah, that. so let's, let's give Yuri a moment to just introduce this, um, the, the Cherry Orchard Project, which uh, I've also seen a couple times. Philip has seen it probably five or six times. Nine. Nine times. <laughs> half, I think half the performances Philip was at. But an astonishing uh, production at the Wilma Theater that just finished its, uh, its uh, a digital run, um, but it, it was live for, uh, for the first month. 
Um, do you want to just tee it up a little bit sure. to help people understand sure. what it was? I mean, let me first still say a couple I, to thank you guys and uh, for, for what we've seen. I, I, I watched it uh, both nights and I saw, I saw it developing and I'm just very grateful for this space that you're leaving there both for both actors to be and to become and to improvise and to develop every night clearly and how much space you leave for me as an audience member to go to fill those emptinesses with my imagination. That's, that's a rare, uh, that, that's like such a rare feeling in the American theater that, that, that actors are being trusted and that audience are being trusted. <coughs> Uh, and again, clearly making a connection between the two, uh, this was clearly a devised project, right? And even though what Krimov did in Philadelphia is called Cherry Orchard, uh, it, was, it was absolutely a devised project as well. Uh, Krimov came with a script, but the script has had multiple emptinesses again, where actors were improvising the text based on the structure of the scene and then we had a special person sitting in the audience, writing it down, and slowly, 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 improvisation after improvisation, it came somewhere to the final text, which sounds similar to the process you were going through, with the only difference your thing was based on, on, the, on, the, you know, on life, and this was based off, uh, off, 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 the classical, off the classical play. So that's certainly the similarity I'm finding. Uh, the project itself uh, also took a long time in preparation, right? It started before I even got to the Wilma Theater as core artistic director. It started by Blan Kaziska, the originator uh, of that. And that's in 18, right? So four years ago, Dima already did the first workshop with the, with, the, with, the, with the company of actors. And that's another important similarity and I think another important reason for success, right? Because you being used to work with people who just audition and come in together is one thing, and certainly the fact that you guys have company, you have the method of working together. Wilma has Blanca built a company about 10 years ago from actors who've been training together and working together for 10 years. Uh, that takes the work to the different level. That takes the work to the different level, the careful cura curatorship, curate, Curation, yeah. curation. They were both good. Both, <laughs> both of them uh, certainly, and that's and that's that involves Philip Arno. That's and that involves Blanc Kaziska. That involves connections between the countries and Wilma looking at who is there, who is out there, and, and, and liking Dima, and then bringing Dima, but still trying the water, and Dima trying the water with the company, spending two weeks, and that's only the start. That's eighteen, right? In this season, Krimov came for two weeks to do another workshop of the piece in the fall, and then had six weeks before, well, five plus tech, uh, before we opened it finally uh, in April. And uh, we had the run, and then we had, thank Lord, now we can do also the digital run, so we had some additional yeah. people from, I think, actually, this time, all 50, 50 states of, of the country who watched it in a number of countries around the world. That's certainly... Uh, that certainly is the, <coughs> this small, strange privilege of this COVID moment that you can do it with the with the equity actors. Uh, but again, I do think that that yes, that that's we want it to be easy. It is not. It is not easy yet, and part of that is time, which is in the United States, as we know, straightforwardly is money. Uh, it's it's also in cream of specific case, but I do think it's true about many uh, directors from, from 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 Europe. It's how much. The space is the part of the storytelling. So we were working most of the time actually on physically on the stage of the theater, and that was a huge privilege for this project and huge help. You know, usually we know most of us we rehearse in the rehearsal hall, and then we have to jump on the stage, right? And one of the and and and, and, the, and also the note that, that you've just touched upon is that yes, having I, I, I'm absolutely I'm not exactly an actor, but I think I can understand enough uh, of this of this job that uh, having a run through or even a stumble through four weeks before opening is a whole different mm -hmm. like profession <laughs> even right than having the first run really at the, during the dress rehearsal right that's uh, or even in front of the audience sometimes right so th this ability to to build the world around right to build to, to, to put the meat on the bones to 
to not just try to run this narrow trajectory from here to there, and hopefully I will I will cover this distance at on my maximum speed with my, with minimum losses, right? But 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 but, but, right? but, well, but 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 to be able to feel to, to start feeling myself free to improvise, to you know to take it you know to take it this way, to take it that way, to, to give it this nuance, to uh, to get to the place which the great. Soviet uh, director of Ross called the squares of improvisation, where you're living within your square of improvisation. You can't really go beyond that, but you but but the squares intersect with other with other actors on stage. So so there is this there is this space which you can share. There is a space which you can explore, return to, play with. And I'm mentioning the name of Afros partially because that's a theatrical dynasty. Dmitry Krimov is the son of uh, this famous um, uh, Soviet, really, director. So Jewish Soviet director would be, would be the right thing, the way to put it, probably. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was, that's the experience with Cherry Orchard. Um, there was a, another very specific circumstance that made this perhaps more complicated, just, just to clarify for people the timing in relation to the Putin invasion of yeah. Ukraine. Um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's like, you know, even you know, if I, 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 I'm also coming, like, I'm here for 13 years, but I'm coming from Russia, and I think every time Russian right now at least even opens their mouth, we should not forget to mention the general context of, of the catastrophe that uh, my native country created in this world almost three months ago. And I think that's, that's extremely important now, probably more important than two months ago, because we start getting used to this fact. It's, it's three months tomorrow, I believe, right? It, three days away from now, right? We, we start to like, oh, okay, that's right. Our, we, we start adjusting. We start like, no, that's the new normal. And that's not the new normal, right? We, sh we should do anything and everything to not try to stop, to, to, to try to not accept that as the new normal. Uh, what Putin is now projecting onto, onto the world and specifically onto Ukraine, which is standing there, <laughs> To protect all of us, honestly, right in these days, uh, needs to be remembered daily and needs to and needs to be mm, fought daily. Uh, the question certainly we ran into uh, when Krimov came here for the final the part of the project. Uh, he came two days, three days. I know it was the last flight that actually made it from Moscow to New York. The next one was already turned around. Uh, and the question we faced, and we, we had this talk with everybody, with Dima included, is like, okay, this is the Russian artist doing the historical Russian play uh, today when Russia is killing their neighbors, killing their brothers in Ukraine. Uh, can we even do that? Uh, Kiev canceled at the can, yeah. Met that week. And I do think that, yeah, and, and we said yes, we should. Uh, and, I, and I do think that the beginning of this was about, well, there is Gergiev and there is Krimov, and they're two very different entities. Uh, and then also we kind of got back to, you know, theatrical thing, well, theater people here, right? Uh, and let's get it back to the analysis mode. Okay, so there is the super objective. There is a super objective. We all heard about that. And today's super objective is to finish this war and to bring this Putin back home, right? In whichever form, right? Dead or alive. We need to stop that. And I do think that in these new uh, circumstances, uh, we need to understand, you know, if we have this as a super objective, we need to understand what is right about our actions in this. And our actions, every action that takes us closer to this super objective is right. And I do think that in these circumstances, letting Russian artists who are against the war, who don't support Putin, who, are, who, are, who feel horrible about this invasion, they need to be supported. Because I do think that otherwise we're actually playing the Putin's hand. If we're not supporting people, who are not supporting him. It's a thin line, but that's the only logic I could find, at least for myself, within, within this very complicated discourse and moment. 
But it also became a major feature of the production. When, when I was watching the show, I felt like I was watching a great artist almost work out in real time in the production itself his feelings about what was going on in Russia. And the Cherry Orchard is a sort of good byplay. And there was a feeling of, you know, the, the, <coughs> the life that I had is, is, is no more. Um, so, something irre is irrevocably being destroyed by what, by what Putin is doing. It, it, and it gave the piece an incredible emotional power and a sort of uh, timely resonance. Dima told me that when he left Moscow to come to uh, Philadelphia, behind his desk were 10 projects that he's committed to for the next three years. Every one of them has been canceled. He will, I don't know what will happen to his things in Moscow. Um, he, he's, uh, He's directing in the, uh, in the Baltics right now. Just came from Israel. We'll come back. Uh, I think he's gonna do some work at Yale, but it won't be full time. And uh, I think we're gonna see him moving the Krimov lab to New York. Mm. And we're, we're gonna be right there helping him all the way through. I don't, go ahead, I, don't know what, I didn't want to cut no, you off. You didn't. Um, well, because one of the things that I feel about now we're coming to a very serious part of this conversation, this has all been very serious, I feel we're all in the same struggles. We're all in the same fight. I mean, when I talk to artists in Poland, the things that they're struggling with, what we've gone through during the Trump years and continuing in the United States, what, what you've lived through in Hungary that led to your leaving the country and not being able to work there, um, we're, we're in this together. Um, and I think, in, if anything, this, you, this fight in Ukraine has made us realize that perhaps more than we did before. This feeling that Ukraine and all of, all of Eastern Europe, who, most of whom are NATO partners, are, are in this struggle together. And it's a struggle that's around culture uh, and around theater, <laughs> which is, in a way, one of the most provocative parts of our culture. Um, as well, and I think just, just to maybe say a word about the linkages projects, um, Philip is working on, uh, an, uh, the, the linkages project was conceived as a travel exchange project of the, of the kind that Philip has done for 32 years, bringing Americans to um, other countries and bringing uh, foreign artists to the United States. But we conceived of it just at the beginning of the pandemic, and then our, our initial trips got canceled. And so Philip, for two years, has been hosting uh, Zoom engagements between about 14 or 15 American graduate students and seven of their counterparts in Hungary who were part of the barricading of the university when the Orban government tried to take, well, succeeded ultimately in taking the university over. Um, and it's been a kind of fascinating set of dialogues, extensive exchange, uh, four and a half hours among little pods of two Americans and one And a commitment Hungarian. of four years. To continue to build these relationships, including travel, as soon as yep. that's possible to do. So that hopefully will lead to outcomes like, like the ones that we're talking about. And I'm doing something similar in Poland, but not with students, with um, sort of the emerging generation of theater leaders in Poland and the emerging generation of theater leaders in the United States. And I think what's been, I think I said this before, what's been most astonishing to me about the project is that I don't have to do anything to tee up these conversations. They see each other's work by video. And I was actually <coughs> very happy to learn that video played, played a role in the start of your project, because I don't think we take advantage enough of the exchange of productions on video. And that we're, Philip and I are cooking up a project that might relate to that as well. Um, but um, what, what I find is that they just share some videos of one another's work. Some of them have had no previous exposure to Polish work, or some of the Polish artists have had no pre previous exposure, or no significant exposure to American theater. And they know what they need to talk about because they're in the same world, dealing with the same, not, not exactly the same set of challenges, 
as you said, the nuances are part, the nuances of it in the United States are different. But we, we are in a global struggle, and I think all of CIT's CD's projects have helped us feel how, for better or worse, how, how much we're all united in that struggle. So my own view, just my own two cents, is the more that we engage with artists from other countries and find ways to actually work together, like in these projects, the more we learn, the more we gain solidarity with one another, the more we learn tactics for withstanding the onslaughts <laughs> that, we're all, that we're all facing, and the more we en enrich each other's um, cultural experience. And we're committed theater. to Poland for four years as well. And because Howard's cohort are, are these emerging leaders, and in many cases, gatekeepers, um, Two projects in the first year are Yeah, just from the Zoom away. engagement, there's already a hunger to make some exchange projects happen. Uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to say what they are okay. because they may or may They're not. They're very happen. exciting, <laughs> but they are. But what was it, what was surprising was that we sort of said, okay, this is just to get to know each other. Let's not talk about collaboration from just four and a half hours of conversation. And what we learned is in, in a number of cases, people were already talking about collaboration because that's what artists do. They meet people they like and who inspire them and they say, how can we work together? Um, so it really does sort of, in a way, I think, um, give the rationale for the whole CITD project of by whatever means, video, Zoom, or, or traveling, meeting each other and then finding ways to support those further engagements. I want to just uh, open up for a little bit. Any thoughts about now where our conversation has gotten to now about where we are in the world, the importance of this kind of work, and, and where you sit in relation I to I do it. want to finish, though, uh, CITD. Uh, we're going to be helping Yuri go to Avignon uh, in June, where a group of uh, now expat Russians, some really key people are going to gather uh, to talk about uh, what I think was touched on earlier when my speech about we're not going to give up on Russia. Uh, we're not going to give up on good Russians <laughs> and th that we're going to be in that game again for the long haul. And, uh, at CITD, I've never asked for money. I have done a lot of work, but I've gotten big grants to do the work. And uh, once the war started, uh, I asked. And I got two initial grants of $60,000 to go together for not a war chest, but a hope chest that CITD will be able to respond immediately. The first of those, I think the first 15 commissions of playwrights from Ukraine, we were able to get the money once I heard the, by phone that we were gonna get the grant within 48 hours into their hands. So, you know, no, we're doing, you know, six months from now, you might hear, this is emergency funding. And so all the people that have, I'm gonna hit all of you up <laughs> to help us replenish that so that we can be in there with resources to take advantage of opportunities to help where it's most needed. Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I one thing I always come back to is that we shouldn't be blaming artists for the actions of their governments. Um, and the, the other thing that I think about is uh, any of us in almost any country in the world right now could be in Arpad's position or Kremov's position of being a person without a country, well, without, a, you, without your home country because the circumstances don't make it possible for you, for you to do the work you believe in. Um, that could happen to any of us in the world. So it's important, it's important for us to remember that we're supporting artists 
um, no matter what their, no matter the complexity of their circumstances. And as their circumstances become more difficult and more complex, they need our support even more. Um, any other, we have just a couple minutes left, but I'm just curious from any of you, big reflections on these themes about international exchange, on the challenges that we may be facing in the coming years, um, how they may, may be affecting you and, and your work. Um. Um, maybe I just want to, um, you know, underline the importance of what uh, these projects show, I mean, the SDA, Someone Dies Again, and even the Cherry Orchard projects, that I think we are living in times when these personal relationships get more and more important. Yeah. So I, I, I strongly have the feeling that uh, the time of the big institutions is over or will be soon over. I can see it in Hungary um, because, you know, one day government uh, or the governments can say that, okay, no more money. Then what can we do? Then we can call each other, we can approach each other. And you know what is extremely dangerous with theater, that you can go outside to the street, you can sit on a bench, you can make theater in your own living room, and no one can stop you doing this. <laughs> and that's why theater is so dangerous for governments. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But sorry, but I believe the big institutions, and I'm very proud in Europe existing uh, this kind of system when the state supports the culture. So mm -hmm. in this country, I think it's important to say it's something what is important, and it's a very big problem if it's not like this. Mm -hmm. Because you know it's, it's good if the people know if we give our taxes for the state, the culture is a part of the state. It's not just economy, it's not just business, but the culture is part of it. And in this country, it's not clear. But you know, in Europe, it's because, you know, I blamed a lot the Eastern Europe and Europe, so I have to say something. So what I like in Europe very much, there is a culture about the state support, because the people can understand our life is not just the business, our life is culture of question. And I think this is, but I understand what you say, which is I want to say, uh, I think we have to fight for the institution. Yeah. So we have to fight for it because if we give up and we say like, okay, the government can occupy everything. So in that case, we give up our freedom and we give up the fight for the culture. So I think, so I think it's good if there are institutions and it's a question who lead them and it's a question how the society uh, 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 dealing with them. And obviously the challenge you're talking about, Tomas, is situations like in your own country where the government is deciding what, what artists should be saying and what they shouldn't be saying. And um, that, that, that's what starts to make institutions feel very, very suspect um, when, when that happens. So I think, I think what Arpad's saying is we need to be fighting for independent and free institutions uh, where artists can really yeah, what, express themselves. Yeah, what they themselves. have to be. And you know, this is, yeah. I think there is a link to this question that Yuri said. It's like, yeah, so I am absolutely against the blaming of, of, of a nation or blaming of community together. But we have to understand the responsibility of the artist, mm -hmm. not just the government, not just the leaders. Mm -hmm. So we can't point on Putin or we can't point on Orban. This was my biggest problem in my country. I didn't leave because of Orban. I left because of the, my own profession mm -hmm. who completely refused to fight against the things. Mm -hmm. So this was my problem. My community was the problem, not, not the leader, not the dictator. So you know, it's like, because when I felt I am completely alone, so this was the moment when I said, okay, I, I need the distance. So I just want to say, I don't want to blame the artist together, but the artists have to understand they are very important and they can say we are just served the eternity. You know, so they have to know they live in the present time and they, they are responsible persons. We not just use the audience admiration, so we have to serve the interest of the society. So this is what I think yep. it's very important in the case of Russia or Hungary and all of this kind of thing. So we have to know it's very important what we say. We can't highlight, we can't say we are just artists. Totally. Because in that case, we don't serve for the support. In that case, it's, but if somebody make a statement, 
so and and brave enough and responsible enough. So I think it's like yeah. So this is this is the good way, I guess. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, thinking about the Ukrainian initiative, I found some language, uh, or I created some language that talked about what these plays would be doing, would be writing the first draft of history through the poet's eyes, through the playwright's eyes. And my partner, John Friedman, came back at me and he'd been so busy just juggling seven balls in the air. He came back and said, what, yes, and also what these playwrights are doing is envisioning what the new Ukraine will be. Hmm. Not just the history, but what can this more inclusive and cohesive nation can be as they move out of arm to arm battle into the vicissitudes of power and you know post war. And I wish I could say I think that's gonna happen sooner than later. But we're celebrating yeah. three months of that right now. But, but that certainly speaks to the artist's responsibility. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big responsibility. Yeah. I'm really glad you, 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 you talked about that, Art. That. Well, let's wind up here. I think, we've, uh, I think we're, we're coming to the end. Just to say thank you to all of you. Um, maybe uh, just by way of winding up to say if you'd like to learn more about um, someone, um, someone Dies Again, which is SDA, which is a brilliant show. It's still running for another... Uh, uh, four more performances in San Francisco at Z Space, and then it will be six performances in this space that we're in, in Santa Rosa. The, at the Imaginist Home, and you can go to their website and learn about that. Um, the Kremoff play, unfortunately, has, has sort of finished its run, but maybe maybe we'll cajole you to bring the streaming yeah, version it. back. Oh, the streaming version is done, too. It's oh, done, yeah. but maybe maybe we'll convince them to bring it back oh, at some so point in the future. Really and, awesome. and in terms of learning about CITD's work, you can go to our website, which is just citd.us, and learn a little bit more about the Linkages Project um, and about the work that, um, that we're doing now in Ukraine and will continue to do throughout that... Uh, Throughout that region, thanks so much for uh, for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thank you Barbara. Very much. <laughs> Bye, Lisa.